Welcome to Security Token Stories, brought to you by Security Token Academy, the leading educational platform dedicated to covering and facilitating the security token industry. I'm Derek Edward Schloss, Director of Strategy at Security Token Academy. Coming up on today's episode, we have Sam Norsaleh, CEO of T0, an end-to-end security token lifecycle and trading platform. T0's goal is to make capital markets more efficient, reliable, and accessible through digitization and blockchain-based technology. To this end, the T0 team has created a number of tailored products that aim to improve traditional markets over time, including the T0 ETS and trading platform, the T0 crypto app, and the Boston Security Token Exchange, a joint venture with Box Digital that aims to be the first regulated security token exchange in the United States. T0 is a Security Token Academy Gold Corporate member. Sam, I'm happy to have you on Security Token Stories. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'd love to start off our conversation by hearing a bit about your background. Your education and professional career have largely been based out of Utah. Maybe we can start off by hearing a bit about your studies over at the University of Utah, Uh, then your time at Overstock, where you've spent a little bit over a decade, and then eventually your opportunity to lead and run the T0 team. Yeah, sure. Um, So, yeah, I studied computer science and computer engineering at uh, University of Utah, I always sort of knew, I've I've always kind of been into uh, a builder of things, whether it's in art or technology. And so computer science was kind of a natural fit. And that's also what my dad studied uh, back in the day at um, George Washington University. So I went into that um, after graduating, worked at a startup, worked for the state for a while, writing software. And and then found Overstock.com, heard about this interesting, controversial CEO, uh, Patrick, who I found interesting, uh, and went and worked for him as an engineer. Um, and then over the course of 12 years, kind of rose up the ranks on the tech side, um, and then eventually shifted more into a product role, did some R&D functions for Overstock, uh, ended up running marketing um, and then back to product development, which really, uh, that's really where I found my kind of my core competency and where I add the most value is more in a more product as more of a product leader. And so rose up the ranks, eventually became president and did that for two years. And then I was ready to really try something new. And my, uh, the areas I was looking to start a company were, in artificial intelligence, um, which you know we were starting to experiment quite a bit with at Overstock, uh, as well as blockchain. You know, Overstock started uh, heavily investing in crypto and blockchain companies, and it, it was sort of at that point Patrick offered me the role, and he knew I was always interested in T zero and the potential of T zero, and he offered me the role to be CEO of T zero, and so I made the switch. Uh, Yes, it's been a year and a half now. Yeah, it sounds like you were exposed to to quite a bit over the last uh, over the last decade. Yeah. Uh, before we get into into the work being done by T Zero, I'd love to kind of first zoom out and talk a bit about the problem that um, that T Zero aims to solve. So, from a high level, and and maybe to provide some background for those just starting to explore their security token journey. Um, what problems is T Zero working on? Are these public market problems, private market problems? Yeah. So with kind of the emergence of blockchain and smart contract technology, there's a lot of applications to a variety of fields. One of them is capital markets, where currently they're very opaque. Uh, It's expensive. There's a lot of intermediaries. Uh, There's a lot of manual compliance processes. Um, Settlement times take, you know, two to three business days after the trade. Uh, and, uh, for a lot of assets, you, a lot of investors don't have access to many assets that, you know, the wealthy or the connected have access to, um, as well as many assets are just not very liquid. Um, so what this new blockchain smart contract technology could really change the way all of that works. So by, you know, for example, the settlement times could be, near instant. Um, You could remove a lot of intermediaries. You could uh, automate away compliance because um, 
that can all be coded into the smart contracts themselves. And so there's there's various and and also democratize access to many assets like you know real estate and funds that normal people don't have access to. So many applications of this tech. Uh, plus, in my experience, I've you know I'm not a capital markets guy, but just coming in, it's things have been are just very archaic in the way they're done. A lot of the technology was built uh, in the 60s and 70s, and I think there was a lot of tuning and optimization done on those. But there was there hasn't been a whole lot of let's reevaluate how this was architected from scratch, which uh, we're kind of um, me from an outsider. We're kind of taking a fresh look at and. Saying, how would we redesign all this if if we had the opportunity? Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. I've noticed uh, across the the blockchain space, especially as it relates to kind of you know open finance and DeFi and, and some of the movement happening there, that it really draws folks that maybe don't have that capital markets background, but are are coming to the space with kind of a fresh look at how these things have normally operated in the past, and it's been. Um, I think it's been helpful to have a, a fresh set of eyes uh, from from different folks who have different various backgrounds coming to the space and seeing how they may be able to chip away at some of the inefficiencies that have been in place in, in our, our legacy markets in the past. So I, I think this is probably a good point at which maybe you can describe a bit how T0 specifically aims to solve some of these problems. Um, I'm on the website right now, and I'm seeing uh, T zero enables the market to tokenize and trade digital assets through blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. So, what part of the digital asset lifecycle is T zero focused on? Is this capital formation? Are we talking about issuance, secondary trading? Are we describing the entire end to end lifecycle of security tokens? Just um, you know, securities in a, in a new blockchain based environment. Maybe you can kind of uh, talk a bit about that. Sure. Um, so we're primarily, and where the name T0 comes from is today's capital markets on, on are on a trade date plus two business days or two to three business days uh, to settle the transaction. And so the name T0 really means settling same day or near instant. Um, and so primarily T0s, uh, as assets become digitized in the form of these tokens, T0 is the platform where there, we want all these assets to trade. And so that's our core focus is on the trading aspects of that. And that includes both the order management systems, so the matching engines um, that the exchanges or ATSs use, um, as well as all the customer-facing uh, brokerage technology to actually plug in and, and, and trade these tokens. And whether that's you know white labeling uh, our front end to trade them, or just plugging in through APIs, or what financial systems uses a protocol called Fix uh, to trade these things. So that's our primary focus. We are uh, doing kind of an end-to-end -end, uh, system right now, so we have the technology to tokenize assets or convert them to digital form. And then the technology to trade them, as well as the, that front end technology. But we're also open to partner with people and uh, be able to trade uh, other uh, token standards on our on our platform. Got it. That makes sense. Um, I I have a a number of projects here that um, that T Zero has has mentioned that they've been working on, and and some of the partners that you know, like you just described that you've found a way to you know, link up with and, and, and find symbiotic ways to, to operate within this new kind of infrastructure. Uh, I, when I'm looking at these pieces, I, I see things like the T0 crypto app. I see the Pro Securities ATS, Dino Financial. You have a partnership with Box to build out the BSTX National Security Token Exchange. You were able to you know, have a, a few acquisitions, Verify Investor, which is one of the leading platforms for investor accreditation, and, and Speed Route, which connects T0 to brokers. I'd like to hear a bit about how your team thinks about putting these pieces together. And, uh, and it may not be today, yeah. but I guess how you envision the final form of T0, what that could look like over the next few years. Yeah, I think you'll see it really. So we bought Speed Route, we bought Pro Securities, which is our ATS Speed Route is an agency broker dealer, uh, which means, uh, well, what it does is smart order routing of traditional stock for, uh, I think it's around 2% of all uh, US 
uh, equities trading is goes through speed route. And, um, so it, it does the matching of those orders. And, uh, we really bought it for that technology, which we're leveraging for now security tokens. So it, it brought us some, uh, talent as well as technology that we needed, uh, for the security token world. Um, the pro ATS, uh, which actually was recently renamed just to make it more consistent with our brand T zero ATS. And that, that just happened uh, a few days ago is going to be where these security tokens trade. And then we launched this crypto, uh, trading a wallet mobile app on iOS and Android. But event, the, the real reason behind that is we want a place where investors can trade all digital assets, whether they're cryptocurrencies or securities, security tokens. And so it's kind of the foundation uh, for trading security tokens. So, so the crypto itself is not the main event. It's, it's sort of just we wanted to get that app up and live and, and allow our investors to uh, trade cryptocurrencies. But as soon as we're approved and we file to become our own, retail broker dealer as soon as we're approved for that which we're hoping is uh in q1 maybe q2 uh that you you'll have uh we'll offer our investors a place to trade all these digital assets like security tokens as well as uh some cryptocurrencies like bitcoin ethereum so so that's that's kind of the purpose of that it's really not we're not really focused on the cryptocurrencies um but we did want to offer our investors, you know, a few of the, the, the top ones. That makes sense. So it sounds like the, the T0 crypto app, that trading platform experience will eventually combine um, both crypto assets and security tokens. So it all takes place um, in, in one singular place. Do I have that right? Yes. And so you mentioned Dino too. That's, that's the first broker dealer we launched security token trading with as a partner. Um, we were signing up and adding several more broker dealers. And in addition, we'll have our T0 will have its own retail broker dealer. So, um, so we'll offer this, uh, to all of them, um, as a service. And, and really right now it's a bit of an un uh, confusing experience on our site with having this crypto app and then linking to Dino to trade security tokens. But eventually, those will come together and collapse into one experience where both the web experience on T0 site and the app experience are uh, both trade all digital assets. Salam, as it relates to the security token industry, where are we today? You know, what, when you look out and, and you, you're, you're looking at the space with your team, uh, what levers need to be pulled over 2020? Levers that are within your control and out of your control to kind of make this industry really thrive over the coming years. And, you know, those levers may be for areas like regulatory infrastructure, um, you know, curating and finding better deal flow, educating um, folks, you know, lowering issuance and, you know, compressing costs for life cycle costs, improving the UX. I guess there's a lot of different things happening here. I, yeah. I'm just curious how you're thinking about, you know, really optimizing what you do at T0 um, to kind of, you know, prime the prime the um, the work you're doing for the mainstream over the next year. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's, I, I would say all of the above, but, um, but really for us, 2019 was more about uh, get the platform built. And so this year, Really, it's it was get the you know technology that digitizes assets, get the exchange or ATS technology live, uh, get all the brokerage face customer facing stuff built, and we've done that now. So going into 2020, it's really now and oh there was yeah several regulatory challenges as well as getting as part of getting that technology live. Um, that's probably been one of the bigger challenges for me. The tech side is easy, and one of the big surprises was how challenging it is in the financial world to uh, do innovation and change. Um, so there was definitely a lot of work done on the regulatory front, uh, just educating regulators, regulators making them feel comfortable with the direction, uh, agreeing on kind of incremental steps to get to where we want to be. Um, uh, so that was a big challenge. 2020 is really now uh, proving that this technology is a viable business. 
And so it's really going to shifting away from tech and regulatory more towards, and regulatory will always be there, but more towards uh, business development and building the two sides of this security token network. That is uh, getting quality assets and to do token offerings or tokenize their cap tables or um, uh, as well as ramping up the investor base that's trading them and the liquidity on the platform. So uh, more broker dealers, market makers, and functions like that. Okay, that makes sense. Sam, I have here in my notes a question about the digital dividend. You know, earlier this year, Overstock announced it would issue shareholders a digital dividend in the form of a security token that would be listed on T0 with the aim to start onboarding shareholders and broker dealers onto the T0 platform. What are some of the sticking points of the digital dividend that still need to get solved? And what's the status of, of that effort today? And then assuming that it moves forward, what are you hoping the digital dividend will enable for the T0 platform? Yeah, so there's, um, this is a very important project for us. Uh, and one of the benefits of being uh, closely partnered with a public company like Overstock is uh, so we're working at this moment, Overstock primarily is leading this uh, working closely with the regulators to uh, register these shares. Um, we've uh, set out to have a proxy vote. So we're having actual shareholders vote uh, to um, make these shares more transferable and, and the right number of shares so that we could do a, for every 10 shares of, for every 10 shares a shareholder owns of overstock that they would get one digital share of overstock that trades on T0's ATS. And so th th there's a lot of uh, work being done to just make sure it, it's all done properly. Um, but that said, we feel very good about it and it is moving forward. Um, we've kind of announced the proxy vote date, uh, the, the record date for that's December 18th. Then the, 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 there's the actual date, the shareholders vote, which is February 13th. And then we move kind of from the vote to the issuance. Assuming we get the votes we need for that, um, we have a record date of February 24th. And that's, uh, I think, sort of an estimate at this point, where that's the actual date that if you own shares of overstock, you know, for every 10 shares you own, you'd get w granted one of these digital shares. And then those would, the digital shares would actually be distributed on March 9th if we stick to that schedule. Uh, so, so that's kind of our tentative time timeline. It's taken a bit longer than we initially wanted, but it's very important to do these this right and make sure we're uh, doing it with the regulators involved. Um, so we're working closely with them. And so uh, the benefits of this is is pretty massive for a T zero. It well, it, first of all, it brings, you know, 50,000 investors that own overstock shares to trade digital assets. Um, so they, they would claim their dividend and they could trade them, but then they could have access to all the other digital assets that T0 offers. Um, so that's uh, significant and will help the liquidity. But in addition, it's bringing a lot of institutions and traditional broker dealers uh, interest into this ecosystem. Um, as this dividend gets distributed, a lot of them, you know, don't want to have their customers go set up accounts on whether it's on our uh, retail broker dealer or Dino, who we're partnered with, or another broker dealer that's one of our partners. And so they're saying, how do we participate in this? And and so it's. It's allowing uh, a lot of big institutions and, and uh, broker dealers to participate in security token trading as well. You know, Sam, I'm not sure if you if you saw this last week. HSBC, um, one of the largest banks in the world, announced that they would be digitizing 20 billion in private placement securities and placing them inside a new blockchain-based custody platform um, over the next three months. Uh, yeah. Earlier um, this this quarter, the, the Paxos team in New York received uh, an SEC no action letter to work with Credit Suisse and Societe Generale on a pilot blockchain settlement project outside of the NSC's legacy securities clearing system. It seems like we're starting to reach the point where some of the largest financial institutions in the world are making investments into both the crypto asset space and the security token space. 
am I seeing this right? Does this traction align with what T0 is seeing? Are attitudes shifting? Do you notice interest ramping? I guess my question is, are the conversations you're having with regulators or infrastructure providers or broker dealers or institutions about security to tokens, are those conversations different today than they were even at the beginning of the year? And then why are these efforts from you know HSBC and Credit Suisse so important for the industry that T0 aims to operate in? Yeah. Yeah, it's really mainstream uh, endorsement of of this technology. But yeah, we're seeing quite a bit of interest from institutions. We're actually in conversations with many of those uh, the firms uh, you mentioned and some that you didn't. Um, so there's definitely interest. And what we've been hearing is these big firms look around, say, what is the What's the one thing that could potentially disrupt our business? And and the answer comes back that it's digital. And so more and more you, in these firms, you see there's a chief digital officer or teams being formed to seriously look at the digital space and security tokens. And I, by the reason I call it digital is I think security tokens are and blockchain is an implementation of how uh, this problem could be solved, but um, and actually the best technology that's around today for it. But one way or another, uh, the way we trade assets is going digital, and and so and I think security tokens uh, and blockchain technology happens to be the best implementation of that today. But that you know p potentially could change in the future. Um, so, yeah, we're getting a lot of interest from the institutions, and uh, we're actually in serious conversations with several of them uh, to do partnerships or, you know, start doing digit digitization of assets uh, with them. So, it's, yeah, it's very good for the industry and space, and I think is going to accelerate the adoption. Sam, you're building out a security token uh, NSC, a national stock exchange, and a joint venture with Box Digital called BSTX. Why is BSTX so important? Why is an NSC like this tailored to a different opportunity than the existing T0 trading platform? Is T0's Pro Securities ATS focused on the opportunity in the private markets, while BSTX is more focused on the opportunity in the public markets? I guess, how are you seeing these efforts kind of running in parallel? And what are you hoping BSTX unlocks across the uh, across the market? Sure. Uh, BSTX, uh, so we're hoping that we launch that as the first national exchange for digital assets and digital securities. Um, and like you described, actually, you're right, is we're, we're kind of seeing that mature companies would go list on the national exchange. Um, where uh, private companies and and other assets could put, would trade on our ATS, so it's really more for companies that want to IPO, but with more at uh, much lower fees and uh, for listing and and trading could could move to uh, BSTX where other private companies and and we're still doing due diligence and making sure the right assets trade on the ATS, but. In general, there'll be uh, more private um, real estate and art, fine art and film and, and those types of things would, would trade on the ATS. And as they grow, potentially some companies could migrate from the ATS to uh, BSTX, the, the exchange. And so that's, that's sort of how we see the division. I had a chance to review and notate a bit the BSTX proposed rulebook that was published by the SEC. And, you know, I found it to be a really interesting look at how a security token exchange could look from the inside. I guess in your view, why is the proposed rulebook so important for this industry and for the NSC opportunity? And then after the SEC published it, um, now that it's out there, what type of feedback are you expecting or hoping for? Yeah, so rulebook is published. It's a way an exchange uh, uh, submits to regulators of how do we treat this new way of uh, trading assets. And so we've, uh, uh, well, Lisa Fall, who's the CEO of BSTX, has been working very close with regulators and doing it, going through iterations of how how this ecosystem would work. Um, and so that rulebook 
has been open to public comment, um, uh, and we're getting feedback there. And so there'll, there'll be iterations there. Um, we're hopeful, you know, late Q1, maybe Q2, that it all gets approved and we can move forward and launch the exchange. Uh, but it's an imp- it's a very important step to getting security token and digital asset trading live. So I'm in the future, how do you think T0 might integrate with other STOs or security tokens that are outside of the T0 ecosystem, but within the security token industry? I think there's a number of issuance platforms right now focused on bringing security token deals to market. You know, I've have had a chance to to interview and, and speak with a number of them. There's you know folks like Securitize and TokenSoft, Vertalo, Polymath, CoreConnex, Circle, Seed Invest, just to name a few. Do you imagine that these and other ecosystem participants will be able to integrate with T 0s trading platform to enable you know secondary trading on those projects that they're helping bring to market? Now, are there areas that really still need to get solved first before something like that is even put together? Yeah. So as I said, we're primarily focused on trading. So wherever we can get quality assets, we will, we're open to explore that. Um, whether it's these other issuance platforms you mentioned, and we're in talks with several of them, we're obviously, uh, we've talked about, uh, working with Securitize. Uh, so we're open if, 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 uh, these platforms have quality issuers, you know, we want to talk and, you know, potentially integrate with them. Um, that said, our own issuance team and business development team is sourcing uh, quite a few high-quality deals, and we see the, uh, kind of just tokenizing with us as the fastest path to liquidity. Um, but we're kind of open to see and flexible. Our goal is just to get quality assets, and we'll see how uh, that ecosystem evolves. Um, so that's that's kind of the current plan. That makes sense. And one of those... Uh... I think partnerships that I saw recently from from your team that that came out was uh, the partnership with Alliance. Uh, I know that project is aiming to tokenize uh, something north of 600 million in real estate projects across the UK over the next several years. And um, there's a technology question actually I have in my notes about this. They aimed to use Tezos as the base layer for for that tokenization project. You know, we've seen other projects use a number of different base layers. We've seen Ethereum and Algorand and, you know, Tezos, EOS, Hyperledger. I uh, recently interviewed the Polymath uh, development team, and they're building a chain using Parity Substrate. I know there's another project led by Ami Ben David building a base layer called Onera. Uh, will T0 support many of the base layers that projects use to tokenize on? And I guess, how are you thinking about that technology challenge or opportunity as it, rely, uh, as it relates to kind of the wide distribution of securities across a number of these base layer chains in the future? Are there specific chains mm-hmm. that are better suited for this industry or this life, the life cycle from issuance to trading to management? I guess, how do you, how are your, how is your team thinking about this, this problem or opportunity? Yeah, so we we sort of architected and designed our systems to be blockchain agnostic. Uh, and while we feel Ethereum is the furthest along with this, we're uh, exploring other chains as well, base chains, um, including you know you mentioned Tezos. Uh, we're we're looking at so we're we're kind of being flexible if there's quality assets or advantages to a blockchain, you know, including, you know, solving performance issues and uh, the costs around, uh, you know, gas and fees. Uh, we're, we're open to uh, try alternative chains and some of them are being driven by issuers. You know, if, if, it, if there's a really quality assets and they like a particular chain and we don't see uh, any, technology issues with it, we'll, you know, we're open to adopt other chains. So in, it may be this multi-chain environment where assets are being traded um, and, and, and have methods to uh, transfer assets from one to another chain. Yeah, that makes sense. So it sounds like you're taking very much a, a flexible approach, seeing it as a lot of this stuff, we're still very early innings um, from a technology mm-hmm. standpoint. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Some the the folks that are you know building out this industry have really faced a number of challenges over the last few years. You know, replumbing our financial markets are not easy. 
Uh, what is the one thing you wish you knew back when the T zero journey started a few years ago? Um, well, yeah, there's a lot I didn't know. Uh, so a lot about capital markets and the brokerage space exchange. Um, so there was definitely a big learning curve there. Uh, on the but probably the biggest challenge has been on the regulatory front and uh, just how how to work with them and and uh, the best approach to uh, to solve this uh, kind of new frontier with them. And so, uh, you know, being more educated on that would have been helpful. But, but no, I think we are in a good place with them and working very closely with them. Uh, and I, and in general, I think they're supportive. Uh, they just want to make sure, you know, rightfully so, investors are protected. Definitely makes sense. So, Sam, I only have a, a few questions left. You know, wrapping up, what does T Zero's pipeline look like in 2020? What are some of the team's goals? What category of assets do you think you're going to see the most traction for? And what are some of the f- things that folks can be excited about in the first few quarters and in 2020 overall? Yeah, we really have. So, we I like keeping goals simple. So, really, there's three goals: um, uh, trade more quality assets. Uh, and improve liquidity or get more investors trading uh, these assets. Uh, and then lastly, launch our Boston Security Token Exchange, which you mentioned, BSTX. But that's mostly Lisa's driving that. We're kind of more the tech uh, provider there. So those were the three goals. Um, and I think uh, Q1, really, it's get more assets trading. Um, and we have several in the pipeline I've mentioned this, but we're in conversations with 160 different uh, issuers, potential issuers, and probably uh, five to 10 of those are are ready uh, to trade, but we're doing due diligence on and just to make sure um, uh, they meet our requirements. And so really getting more investors and broker dealers trading, including hopefully we in Q1, we get our own up and running and we can combine those the crypto and security token experiences like we mentioned earlier. Got it. Sam, I've really enjoyed the conversation. Where can people learn more about T0, what you're working on, and how can they reach out to you if they'd like to learn more? Uh, The best place is probably our website, Um, T0.com. We're working on kind of making some changes to it, and you'll see more content and richer content on there, Um, as well as on Twitter. You know, we have a uh, at T zero blockchain, you, you'll find our Twitter page and that's where you'll get the latest updates on news and, um, anything new that, uh, is going on with the company. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time today, Sam. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's it for this week's episode of security token stories. For more security token content, visit us online at securitytokenacademy.com and subscribe to our newsletter, the security token edge, which lands in your mailbox each weekend. You can also keep up with the latest security token news by following us on Twitter, Telegram, YouTube, Facebook, and Medium. Before we go, a big thank you to Security Token Academy's Platinum and Gold Corporate members who make this podcast possible. You can learn more about Security Token Academy's corporate members at securitytokenacademy.com. I'm Derek Edward Schloss. From all of us here at Security Token Academy, thanks for listening. Security Token Academy does not provide investment or legal advice. We are not a registered broker-dealer or investment advisor. Opinions expressed in this podcast are the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Security Token Academy. More information can be found on our website at securitytokenacademy.com.